Welcome back to Whiskey Bonded. I'm Conrad, and this is the core lineup of the Broken Barrel Whiskey Company. I'm going to try all five of these today, including the new Americana, and I'm going to rank them one to five. Let's see what it's like. They're dramatically different, so this is going to be really interesting. Stick around. The founder of Broken Barrel, Seth, thought that there might be a missed opportunity in the way that we finish whiskeys. He thought, well, why do you have to use an entire barrel or an entire head to age the whiskey when you could just break them up and use a variety of different staves to age the whiskey and finish it? Well, all of this whiskey is sourced from Owens Borough Distilling Company in Kentucky, so it's all Kentucky sourced. Well, Kentucky and Indiana sourced with the rye. It's all aged a minimum of two years because it's straight, some three age stated, but then it's all finished in different ways. So say with the cask strength, this 70% corn, 21% rye, and 9% malted barley is finished with an oak bill combination of stays of 40% ex-bourbon, 40% new French oak, and 20% sherry cask. And each one of them is different. It's clearly defined on the label what it is made out of as far as the mash bill and what it is finished in as far as the oak bill as he says it. So I've got them lined up in order here from uh, lowest proof to highest, the California Oak 88 proof, the small batch 95 proof, the new Americana, which is an American whiskey at 100 proof, the Heresy Rye at 105, and the Cask Strength Bourbon at 115. So I'm going to use my Great Whiskey Challenge Kit, actually two Great Whiskey Challenge Kits, and I'm going to pour these out. I'm going to blind taste them. Let's see how it goes. All right, so I'm gonna mix these up. I tell you what, I'm gonna complain about one thing. These bottles are beautiful. I love the designs, the labeling is cool. There's an embossing in the bottle, but man, that little lip on the top here uh, makes a mess when you pour. They are not great for pouring. So if I have to nip it something right off the bat, that's what it's gonna be. All right, I'm gonna try these out. I'm just gonna basically put them in in order from one to five, and let's just see what it turns out to be. Okay, so it's not easy to do five things, to do tasting with five different things, to keep them all sorted out, to nose them, to kind of figure out what you like. For me, this one was only difficult in the bottom three. The first two were super easy. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. Let's start with the fifth one and see what they are and reveal. These three were kind of difficult for me to sort out. Unfortunately, only one is a rye, so I knew which one that was. I know that I'm not a always a rye fan. I tend to prefer bourbons or American whiskeys over rye in general, not always. So I had to kind of put that out of my mind to say, okay, I know this is the rye, but subjectively, where would I place it? So uh, in last place, uh, see one that is going to be the uh, California Oak 88 proof Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey finished with broken barrel staves. So in fifth place, this is the 70% corn, 21% rye, 9% malted barley finished with 80% Central Coast Cabernet staves and 20% French oak. That is the lowest proof of them. Uh, I'm not a real surprise there. Uh, this one just doesn't, it's good. It's fine. It just doesn't have a lot going on. You can pick up you can pick up a little bit on that sweetness from the Cabernet uh, uh, Sauvignon casts, but it just doesn't have a lot going on there compared to the other ones. This would probably be better to, to, to sit by itself. It's actually quite nice. There's a little sweetness to it. Um, it's, really, it's really not bad. Uh, in fourth place, I'm going to go ahead and guess that that is probably the rye. Okay, so that is the rye. So the heresy, in fourth place, the heresy straight rye whiskey, 105 proof. That is the 95% rye, 5% malted barley, uh, finished with 40% ex-bourbon, 40% new French oak, and 20% sherry oak casks. Uh, that is actually not a bad rye. I think it would probably use a little bit more sweetness. The rye flavors are all there. Uh, they're all good. I like a rye that is finished with a little bit of sweet to kind of to kind of balance out the spiky, prickly, uh, spearminty kind of notes with something a little sweeter. This one could probably use a little more sweet, but it's actually generally pretty good. Uh, third place would be, well, this is getting interesting. So third place is the new Americana. Um, the Americana is the 100 proof straight American whiskey. Uh, it is 80% corn, 14% rye, 6% malted barley. Not sure why that is not considered a bourbon uh, when it's 80% corn, but it says straight American whiskey. Uh, the oak bill is 40% charred American oak, 40% toasted American oak, and 20% American apple brandy cast. I think the proof helps this one out a lot. The apple brandy cast is kind of there. 
I mean, you can kind of pick up on the note a little bit. It gives a little more complexity going on this one. It was kind of tight between these two. Um, I think this one might just have been one of my personal preferences, but that, that proof is right on that one. So let's see what number two and number one are. So number two, what we have left is the, oh, this is interesting. So the small batch 95 proof and the cast strength 115. So A. Okay, so no real surprise here. I mean, this the small batch is number two, meaning that the cast strength is number one. I kind of suspected that that would be the case. Um, really, it wasn't. The proof is not super discernible. It doesn't come across as super hot, uh, but the flavors are richer. The nose is richer, uh, so that, that does make sense to me. So number two is the small batch straight Kentucky bourbon whiskey. Uh, it is 70% corn, 21% rye, 9% malted barley, finished in... 40% ex-bourbon barrels, 40% new French oak, and 20% sherry. Wow, so so I think the sherry cask on this one works really, really well. Uh, I think the slightly lower corn content at 70% instead of some of these other ones that are like this one was uh, 80%. Uh, I think that works really, really nice. I think really this is just a nice sipping bourbon, good classic flavors, a little bit of sweetness added in that sherry. I think that sherry really does it for this one. I think that's really what makes this one do as well as it does is that sherry finish. I like a sherry note. Very nice, very nice sipping whiskey. And the number one is the cask strength, 115 proof, 70% corn, 21% rye, 9% malted barley. So the same as the small batch. Uh, same finishing also ex-bourbon barrels, 40% ex-bourbon, 40% French oak, 20% sherry cask. But bottled at 115, it makes all the difference in the world. This one really jumped out at me as, as the best one right off the get. First smell, first taste. I really, that one popped right out. I gotta tell you, I'm not always a believer in gotta be higher proof to be better, but there is something to be said for the right proof point. And I think this really makes that shine through. This one jumped out ahead of these other ones. And I think because for this particular experiment, bill, uh, idea, mix, mash bill, whatever it is, the higher proof is making it work. It, it's This is a sweet spot for this product. So there you go. There it is from number one to number five. Um, I'm going to do shorter reviews on the Broken Barrel. I really, really think this concept is cool. Uh, there are some indications here that he really is onto something. Uh, some of these are slightly unique and delicious without being super surprising. This it was in one of my uh, lesser known, inexpensive uh, bourbon videos. This represents a pretty freaking good uh, value proposition in my man. These are not terribly expensive. This is not terribly expensive. You can find that video on, on, uh, on Instagram or on the YouTube shorts uh, where that one pops up as one of the affordable ones. I don't remember the price on it, but it wasn't very expensive. I'm going to dive a little deeper into these. You can kind of see uh, what they're like individually. I think some of these lower ones are going to are going to benefit from me tasting them individually. They're not going to be quite so overpowered by the better offerings. So what experience do you have with the Broken Barrel? Have you checked this out? Uh, they do have a tasting room located in LA. Uh, if anybody down there has tried it out, please comment in the videos. Let me know what you think. I know they do special offerings at Barrel Picks as well. I'll be curious to see if maybe I can get my hands on one of those. But until then, thank you to Seth for uh, sending these out. This has been a really great experience. I look forward to diving into these a little bit more, letting them breathe a little bit, and then revisiting them. So I'm Conrad, this is Whiskey Bonded. Uh, come back and check out the shorts for more specific information on each of these five bottles. And go ahead and comment, like, and subscribe for me. I really appreciate all the support, and uh, we'll see you back here soon. Cheers.